Hello and welcome to Explore Energy 2019 hosted by IHS Market. I'm here in London, it's a great pleasure to introduce my guest today, Alexandra Burkhurst, who's Vice President of Digitization and Computational Science at Shell. Good morning, Alexander. It's great to be with you today. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, I, I think we've we've already talked a lot this morning yeah. about digitalization. Yeah. The question is, we're all on this path now. Yeah. IHS Market's investing in all sorts of ways. Mm. Shell is investing in all sorts of ways. We, we're moving along the curve. Yeah. How far, though, do you think we genuinely are on yeah. this path? Uh, it's a great question. And... Um, I think what I see is very encouraging. Um, so from a perspective of my uh, company, um, we've been uh, at it for quite some time. We really started in 2013 to think about digitalization and what it could unlock. Um, the enormous amount of uh, data that's becoming available to us and also the trends uh, driven by cost reductions in cloud computing, data storage, and so that makes it now possible to do things that previously weren't possible. So the, the potential that we see um, of, of billions of dollars of value, um, actually we start now seeing materializing with real examples. And, uh, and this morning I shared a few uh, predictive maintenance, right? Now uh, being rolled out over uh, a multitude of assets in Shell, helping assets to perform better, um, spot failures in equipment or valves before they happen. Um, real applications in a subservice domain uh, where uh, reservoir engineers, uh, for example, um, or people that do seismic interpretation can go with very complex large data sets in a fraction of the time compared to what it used to be. Um, so yeah, we start seeing real examples uh, and real benefits coming through. But I think um, it's a little bit maybe the tip of the iceberg. There's still much more to do uh, when you start scaling, truly replicating, becoming truly, truly data-centric organizations. And, uh, and externally, it's moving very fast. Uh, the technology in the world around us is developing at a speed that, that uh, I've never seen before. Um, so I think there's still a lot more to go. So thinking about digitalization, um, is there a plateau in sight in the near future, or is this sort of exponential pace we've got at the moment going to continue for the foreseeable future? It's a great question, and I think, uh, uh, and honestly, it's very hard to quite predict in the very long term how this will evolve. Um, I don't see that plateauing out for quite some time, and, and, and the reason for that is that the technology is still developing a lot but also the ways of working um, and how you make use of these technologies and really embed it in your business processes is still where there, uh, there I think, are significant uh, improvements to be had. So I don't quite see this plateauing out. I think the hype and maybe a little bit mystery on digitalization is very quickly disappearing. Um, it's a more precise uh, conversation. Uh, and it's also more and more a conversation about data and culture, I think, right? Is what can you really make, uh, make use of the data sets that you have? How can you make data available to the person that needs it, uh, when they need it, in an easy manner, that it can lead to insights and decisions much faster? And sort of the ways of working that you also have to change. So having the right culture around it uh, increasingly becomes more important. Yeah, so we, we've mentioned the word culture and the word people now. Um, it, it is a form of change management, yeah. albeit a digital one, and we're in an industry with a quite diverse demographic yeah. now with a lot of experience yeah. at, the, at the upper end yeah. um, and a lot of new, innovative, um, fresh thinkers coming yeah. in from university with completely yeah. different ways yeah. of working. Yeah. Um, is digitalization helping uh, bridge that gap at Shell and preserve the, the expertise, but also uh, foster innovation? Or are yeah. you finding indeed that the, the older generation is just as good at innovation in digitalized <laughs> environments? It's a, I think uh, we established in Shell a single digital set of expertise, um, spread over four hub locations in the world, Houston, Amsterdam, London, here uh, in Bangalore and in India, we're now 350 people uh, sort of in size. Uh, we spread four generations, 22 nationalities, uh, hired uh, many, many uh, people and talent from other industries. Uh, uh, automotive, banking, uh, consumer goods uh, that sort of, I think, enjoy working on the very complex data problems that the energy industry provides. Um, so it's a very diverse mix uh, and, uh, and, and not uh, linked to a specific or only younger generation at all. And, 
And one of the most exciting things for me to observe is you start seeing teams working together, uh, domain experts, where that is an uh, engineering discipline, process engineer, technologist, a reservoir engineer, with a data scientist, people from the, the business and people from IT. Is that is sort of when the magic happens um, and when you start uh, combining that and, uh, and really sort of creating new things that weren't possible before. So, uh, yeah, and I start seeing that really that ways of working uh, now, now permeating throughout our organization. So it really is uh, a technology and people and multiple perspectives uh, sort of game. Yeah. Uh, let, let's talk a bit about the data. We keep talking about data. Yeah. Um, not so long ago, you used to have to persuade people that it was important to capture yeah. and secure data. Yeah. Uh, some people saw it as, as an inconvenient thing that yeah. was growing yeah. uh, and being costly to store. Yeah. Now we're at the in in the place where we're beginning to to monetize it. Yep. Um, so how how Shell proceeded along the path of uh, convincing people that data yep. is a valuable asset? Yeah, I think the important thing is to always link it back, which is one of our core principles in uh, digitalization, to think about sort of the friction, the customer experience, the user experience uh, that you want to address or the problem that we're solving. So you'll have to anchor it in an endpoint that is meaningful. And if you work your way back from that, and think what is possible with the technologies and what data you really need to make that happen, uh, then it becomes easier to get people excited in data. Um, there have been attempts, uh, and, and maybe over the past few years also in our organization, and certainly in the industry, where, where people embarked on a sort of data cleanup exercises, cleaning up the data without actually being really clear for what purpose, and they never really work. Um, so the, the best thing still is to think about uh, the use case, the thing that you're really trying to solve, and then think your way back into what data sets you really need, what quality you need, and how you're going to manage that. If you combine that with um, cross-company thinking, sort of data platforms and infrastructure that you need to do that in, an, uh, yeah, in a consistent way, uh, I think then you start really, uh, I think, getting a, a much better handle on data. In fairness, I think Shell is also still on a journey in that. We're not completely in every element uh, there yet where we want to be, uh, but it's improved drastically over the last few years already. Yeah, and, and I think uh, I think it's quite interesting as we as we look at the journey that that, that people are on with data. Um, Shell's got a very diverse, um, presumably very smart uh, workforce full of uh, full of innovative ideas. Uh, you're democratizing data in a yep. way by making it widely available, um, and inevitably, I think it has to lead to pockets of innovation yep. where individuals yep. go, "I can do something really cool yep. here." And how do you make sure that if they do something really cool, yeah. that that benefit is pushed across a broader organization? Yeah. We've called it citizen data science. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, how do you deal with that? Yeah, it's a great dilemma of digitalization. And I think we actually you have to see uh, both. Um, is, is that local innovation uh, is absolutely critical to go with speed uh, and also to foster sort of uh, yeah, new thinking, new experiments. We've launched uh, Shell.ai as a platform uh, with a self-service capability, so anybody that's interested in the area can start doing some um, uh, applications themselves already. Um, but for a few where you say, well, here it really makes sense to replicate and scale it in a sort of standardized way across Shell, um, we pick them up and then uh, yeah, more globally in global programs uh, replicate them. Um, and uh, but, but there is a certain degree of uh, degree of risk of, of replicating, of reinventing the wheel in different places. And to be honest, going back to the example of predictive maintenance, so when you do uh, predictive maintenance on a compressor, whether that compressor is in a refinery, a chemicals plant, or offshore, in principle, doesn't matter that much for the way you go about it. So for those type of things, we're really trying to scale that throughout the organization. Mm -hmm. yeah. So in, in another question that comes up quite a lot, I think, when you're talking about individuals having access to a huge pool of information, yeah. um, is the whole process of information security. Yeah. Uh, it, it's one of the biggest challenges we often get people saying, well, yeah, but, but once you arm people with that information, they could do all sorts of damage. They might yeah. create a completely different production profile yeah. to that being publicly yeah. stated by Shell. How, how do you contain that? Do you yeah. have very, very uh, rigorous information security policies? Yeah, there, there is strong information security uh, in place for exactly that reason. 
So strict controls about what type of data can be accessible by whom. Uh, and then also uh, for some of the people in my organization that need access to data to, for example, develop AI or machine learning uh, methods, you need to, of course, to provide that access. And we've got methods now in place to do that and also keep oversight on who has uh, access to what data at what time. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a sort of a, a bit of a double-edged sword on the one hand, right? Uh, you need to really understand the, the issues and security issues that, that uh, are uh, critical for dealing with sensitive data sets. But also, uh, I think, not have uh, barriers in place that are really unnecessary. And we've seen a few of them as well in the past, where there were barriers in place or hurdles in place that really were there for a very good reason. So those we've been trying to remove. Almost a bit of the concept of data access unless, right? So you can access to have data unless there's very clear reasons not to do it, when the data is sensitive or confidential or most confidential. How does Shell manage the fine balance between uh, discoverability of data and having access to that data? And then another example maybe to, to add to that is uh, the work we've been doing with, with others on the open source uh, subservice data universe, which is really now uh, more than 90 companies signed up to that. And uh, the vision of that is to create a, yeah, a, a platform where subservice data can be stored with sort of uh, standardized data models around it that make access to that data uh, much easier for everybody in the industry. And then what people can really focus on is how you get the most valuable uh, insights from the data to get the decisions quicker. And that's really where I think the competitive differentiation sits. Not so much in the data access and data management itself. So I wonder, is OSDU a litmus test for the upstream industry and its ability to create standards? Uh, it seems to have the best legs of any such initiative yet. Do you think it's got the ability to succeed where others have failed? I'm looking forward to have the conversation with you in two years and we will, we will see. Uh, I'm, I'm very hopeful on it because I think uh, what I feel is a realization in the industry that this is really critical. Um, the data volumes have become so big and, and, uh, and uh, the value that's in those data is so critical. Uh, that, that we really need to drive efficiencies in the way we go about it. Um, so I, uh, I'm sensing a strong you know, support in that. And, uh, and I think the number of companies that signed up over just the last year or two, I think is a bit evidence that the industry is ready for this. Uh, but uh, let's take stock in, uh, in a year or two. We focused on the upstream so far. Of course, Shell is a diverse business with a very strong customer facing component. Um, thinking about digitalization there and data, how do you deal with, with the content uh, of customers and that whole customer facing organization? No, you're right. I think we are a company that, that spreads many different areas and businesses, subservice, uh, assets, uh, but also quite a large customer facing presence. Uh, um, about 44,000 uh, uh, retail sites around the world, uh, 30 million uh, customer transactions per day. So a very large sort of customer footprint in, uh, in parts of our business. And uh, from a technology perspective, right, uh, you can see how some of those technology applications can also work there and, and, uh, and improve a customer experience, whether it is through the GoPlus uh, app, for example, in, in retail that we launched recently in the UK. Uh, but it can be deployed in many other areas of the, of the world as well. So we, we definitely see um, big transformations in that part as well, and also how technology can really help improving the customer experience. Okay, and, and with that, let's, let's talk a little bit about technology. That's on a, um, a very fast curve. It's always evolving. Um, I, I personally think that we are only at a point now where machine learning's kind of commoditized, right. in, in particularly, say, in upstream. Yeah. We're just taking our first steps with AI. Yeah. Often the two are confused. Yeah. Um, do you agree with that? Where do you think we are on the on that that walk to full artificial intelligence? Yeah, yeah. Well, if if I ask uh, you know chief scientists that we have um, working in Shell about this, then then typically what I get is that AI really as a technology is probably in the stage of infancy, right? We, we still have many, many steps to go um, on uh, really seeing the full uh, sort of uh, value and impact uh, these type of technologies can have. Machine learning has been in indeed one of the sort of first very clear um, applications of that. I think that that's getting much more common practice. Um, I think we see now in Shell a 
machine learning and AI applications in, in every part of the business. Uh, Technology-wise, I think uh, that, that, that's much now easier for us to deal with. But you still also need to integrate it into ways of working, uh, right? A, uh, a great prediction and a great forecast and an insight uh, are meaningless unless you do something with it. Um, so it also needs to change the way we organize ourselves and the ways of working. And there, I think we still, uh, as an in industry, have a little bit to go. Um, and this space is uh, developing tremendously fast. What I'm always fascinated by is how uh, combinations of technologies can unlock things. So when we really start seeing high-performance computing with AI, Internet of Things, maybe blockchain, how configura configurations of te different technologies can unlock new things. And I think we're going to see much more of that in the future and things that we probably cannot even predict now yet. I couldn't agree more. Um, let's stay with you. We were touching on change management again. We've touched yeah. on that three or four times in this conversation. Um, there's AI, ML is one of those big fear factors in some people. Yeah. Um, it would almost make them defensive. Is this thing, is this robot going to take my job? Um, I think that many companies have therefore focused on saying, look, look at what this is doing. It's yeah. augmentation. Yeah. Um, it's helping you sift through data that otherwise yeah. just you would not be able to do. Yeah. Is that how you're approaching digitalization with, with AI and Shell? No, I think you're right. I think there is a certain sort of degree of hesitation or fear sometimes when you talk AI. Sometimes that's fed by the media and sort of Hollywood type of movies that talk about AI. But, but in fact, if I look at uh, the work that we've been doing so far in Shell, and when really people start seeing that uh, AI and machine learning is a way to assist people doing their work, uh, and to remove some of the more mundane or less interesting uh, time-consuming task and spend more time on insights, what you can do with those insights and think a bit more technically and, and, and longer term is actually very, uh, very empowering and very engaging. Uh, so I think when you get working the specifics with the teams, I think most of those uh, fears will, uh, will, will disappear. Nevertheless, I think in the long run, there will be, you know, new jobs created um, that didn't exist before. And some of the jobs will also be impacted by what's being possible by automation, of course. That, that's, uh, that's for sure true as well. I, I, I change technology and change. Industrial Revolution 1, now we're in Industrial Revolution 4. Yeah. We, we always have to deal with change. Yeah. We always have to adapt, don't yeah. we? It's yeah. one, one of those factors. Yeah. Um, and, and I think people will adapt. I see them changing as they get access to, to, to new technology. If we look into the future, we've got some really interesting things. You've mentioned blockchain already, yeah. uh, which is getting itself established in procurement yeah. and, and parts yeah. and things like that. Um, down the road, we've got uh, quantum computing, yeah. possibly around the corner, offering some, some yeah. uh, amazing possibilities. Yeah. Um, what do you, you think is next? Are we heading towards artificial intelligence that handles uncertainties and can go a little bit further itself? Yeah. Or we get to quantum computing first. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think uh, the jury out there has decided, and uh, I don't think I can sort of make a bet on that either. Uh, I think quantum computing, we're following it with great interest, of course, and there is significant potential in some areas when it finally fully unlocks. Uh, but but the time predictions around that are are vary quite widely. Um, and, um, and I think in, in further uh, sort of uh, AI applications, when you go truly to uh, machine learning, deep learning, reinforcement learning, of course, there is uh, much more to be had and gained there as well. Blockchain is an interesting one. I think uh, that probably had a quite high degree of hype, uh, you know, two, three years ago, mainly because people associated with Bitcoin and things mm -hmm. like that. We start seeing some really good use cases. We made an investment in a company here in the UK, Advanced Blockchain, uh, two years ago and doing um, work with them on trading and the trading platform. We had our first, we think, industry first, uh, all derivative, derivative trade through blockchain uh, at the end of last year. Um, we're doing work uh, back in 2017 to help us to use blockchain to track, uh, for example, lubricants products uh, to uh, make sure that uh, we can ensure the validity of products when it hits a customer. Uh, so that's another area where you start seeing the real use cases emerging and, uh, and it's quite exciting. So uh, as, as we wrap up here, uh, interestingly, we've gone through technology um, and you 
keep mentioning the fact that there's partnerships to be had. Um, yeah. There's a lot of expertise out there. So is that the future of digitization? Is, is its homegrown IP maybe in the way that you, you, uh, you build things and then utilize them, but in terms of actually building them, yeah. is it really going to be an ecosystem of, of connected experts that are, are from, from all sorts of industries and different, different companies? Yeah, I think for sure. Uh, and, and for quite some time, we've been working this in partnerships already, sometimes with very small startups uh, and also with some of the big players, of course, like Microsoft. Uh, um, how is the you uh, that you talked about is a nice example of such partnership and an ecosystem um, for predictive maintenance. We've partnered up with C3.ai uh, and using that as our platform to at scale deploy AI solutions in a similar way across all uh, assets and shell. Uh, and I uh, totally expect all those type of partnerships to continue to uh, exist and expand. Um, we, we typically tend to go for market available solutions unless there is a real reason not to do it. And then think about smart partnerships and only focus on those things where there's real competitive differentiation or really something unique about it to do that in-house. So it's a case of managing risk. You don't want to gamble on relatively unproven things unless you can perhaps see an angle that others can't. Yeah. Well, I think you and I are both excited to be on this uh, on this digitalization curve. Uh, we've pretty much concluded that we're only at the beginning um, and we're only limited by, by the possibilities of technology and our own ability to think and scale up to the opportunities in front of us. So it remains for me to thank you very much for your time thank today. Thank you so much. Oh, it's Thanks been for great talking me. to you. Pleasure. Thank you. Yeah.